Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you were absolutely right, but it didn't feel good at all? Maybe you won an argument, pointed out someone's mistake, or corrected a friend's misunderstanding. And yet, instead of feeling triumphant, you felt a nagging sense of emptiness or even discomfort. This brings us to the question we're diving into today. Can being right ever lead to unhappiness? Welcome to Emotional Soulmates, where we explore the intricate webs of our emotions and relationships. This week, I'm asking you to confront a question that might shake up your perspective. If you're right but not happy, what good is being right? Now, let's unpack this. It's a question that challenges our ego, and that's why so many of us avoid it. In my circle, I see it all the time. We revel in being right, don't we? We bask in the glow of validation, and sometimes, let's be honest, we even take pleasure when others stumble. But here's the kicker. That fleeting joy of seeing someone else trip only lasts until we confront the deeper implications of our need to be right. So, let's ask ourselves, if you're right but we're not happy, do you still want to be right? Think about it. If you're right and others are wrong, chances are, those others are feeling uncomfortable. Nobody likes to feel wrong. When they feel that discomfort, they might distance themselves from you, and in turn, you're left feeling isolated and unhappy. So, what's the point of being right if it leads to unhappiness? This is a tough question, and I know it can stir up some uncomfortable feelings. Now, let's clarify something important. If you're right and you're happy, then we have no problem at all. This episode isn't about that scenario. If your correctness brings joy to you and those around you, then we're in a good place. But what about those times when you find yourself standing firm in your rightness while the atmosphere around you grows tense and unhappy? That's the situation I want you to reconsider. It's a bit confusing, isn't it? And just to add a little more complexity, let's think of this as a distraction to stimulate your neurons. Sometimes the sound of my voice can be so soothing that you might feel sleepy but let's keep those critical points in mind as we navigate through this. Honestly, I've made plenty of mistakes in my quest to be right. I've often found myself in combative situations, and I have to admit, there's a part of me that feels ashamed of that combative nature. If you've listened to previous episodes of Emotional Soulmates, you might remember my constant reminders to love and be considerate. But the truth is, I'm not naturally like that. I've fought many battles, often over trivial matters that only brought about unhappiness. One day, it hit me. I'm often right, but I'm not happy. The people I've imposed my correctness upon aren't happy either. So, I began to question the very essence of our existence. Are we right or wrong? And why does being right sometimes lead to wrong outcomes? What's the point of being right if it doesn't bring about happiness? This was a turning point for me and it opened up a new way of thinking about love and relationships. I started to develop a ranking system in my mind, and let me tell you, I'm grateful for this system. It serves as a compass for how I interact with others. So what's this ranking? It's simple yet profound. I distinguish between people and things created by people. It might sound a bit abstract, but let's break it down. When it comes to relationships, we must always place people above the things created by people. This fundamental shift in perspective can help us avoid getting caught up in the right or wrong dynamic that often leads to unhappiness. Let's consider a common scenario. Have you ever had an argument with someone over a spelling mistake? You pour your heart into a message only to have someone swoop in and point out your errors. Instead of engaging with the emotion behind your words, they focus solely on the technicality. Do you know friends like that? If you do, I feel sorry for both sides because that's a clear sign of unhappiness. The person correcting you is technically right, but what they create is discomfort and distance. So is that right worth it? When someone prioritizes the rules of language over your feelings, they risk creating unhappiness for both parties. They've chosen to value correctness over connection, and that's where we often go wrong. It's a simple formula. When we focus too much on the things created by humans, we lose sight of what truly matters, our relationships. Spelling is just one example, but it illustrates a broader point. 
When we prioritize people over their mistakes, we become sensitive communicators. We learn to appreciate the emotions behind the words, and we naturally overlook minor errors. That's what sensitivity looks like. So, let's recap the ranking system. Always place people above the things created by people. This mindset can be a guiding principle in our interactions. But let's not forget that language is still sacred, and there are times when we must respect it. In academic settings or formal occasions, we need to uphold the standards of language. But in everyday interactions, we must remember that human connection is more important than perfection. Imagine receiving a text from your grandmother, filled with love but riddled with spelling mistakes. Would you really point that out? That would be illogical. The effort she put into reaching out to you is what matters most. Let go of the trivialities created by humans and focus on the love behind the message. Now, let's consider another scenario. What if you encounter someone who has just been scammed? They're feeling ashamed and upset. How do you respond? This is the perfect opportunity to apply that ranking system. Instead of criticizing their lack of judgment, recognize their feelings. They're already suffering. They don't need your judgment on top of it. If you prioritize their humanity, you'll instinctively ask, what do they need right now? You'll understand that they're feeling vulnerable and desperate. You might offer comfort, listen without judgment, or simply create a safe space for them to express their feelings. This approach fosters connection rather than division. Now, let's bring this back to relationships. In romantic partnerships or family dynamics, the stakes can be even higher. Criticism often arises from a desire to be right, and it can inflict deep harm. We need to recognize that criticism is rarely rooted in care. When we criticize, we're asserting our rightness and diminishing the other person's feelings. So let's return to that original question. If you're right but not happy, what's the point? Do you want to keep criticizing? Can you maintain calmness and rationality in your criticism? Or are you merely projecting your own frustrations? If we prioritize unhappiness, we're only creating more distance in our relationships. Ultimately, we all crave happiness more than we crave being right. We should only be right when it also brings happiness. If being right leads to unhappiness, then we need to reevaluate our priorities. Why not allow ourselves to be wrong sometimes? Let's think about conversations with our parents or older generations. They might not have the same expertise on certain topics, and that's okay. Why argue to the bitter end over trivial matters? If they're wrong, so what? It's just a conversation. We need to remember that yielding doesn't equate to weakness. Yielding for minor issues is a sign of strength, a choice for happiness over pride. That's the essence of this discussion. You can choose happiness over the need to be right. When you recognize that, you embrace a more valuable path, one rooted in connection and understanding. Remember that ranking system, people above the things created by humans. It's a simple yet powerful guideline. And as we navigate through life, let's keep this perspective in mind. We'll encounter differences, whether in opinions, music preferences, or fashion choices. Instead of rushing to judgment, let's take the time to understand each other. In every interaction, let's prioritize humanity over the trivialities of life. When we do that, we foster deeper connections and create a more harmonious world. Thank you for joining me today on this journey. I hope this discussion has sparked some reflection in you. If you found value in this episode, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with others who might benefit from this message. Let's continue to explore the emotional complexities of our lives together. Until next time, take care.